Uh, good afternoon, everyone, or a good whatever time of day it is where you are watching from. My name is Daniel Hahn, uh, and I'm very pleased to have been asked to chair today's conversation about the impact of prizes on translation. Uh, this is a, a bookseller webinar. It's supported by the Sheikh Zayed Book Award. We're grateful both to the bookseller and to the Sheikh Zayed Book Award for uh, bringing this lovely group of people together to talk about this. Um, I will introduce our three uh, panelists. We are going to be having a chat uh, over the course of um, some of this hour, um, but we're of course going to leave time for questions from you uh, towards the latter part of this. So as you're listening to Nancy and Gassan and Sam speaking, do please share questions with us. Um, I would encourage you to put, uh, you will possibly, those of you who are familiar with this Zoom world will know that there is a Q&A function at the, bottom of the, at the bottom of your screen. You can put your questions for us in there. You can put your questions in the chat. Um, if you're putting questions in the chat, I just remind you to make sure that they are addressed to all panelists and attendees. We don't want you just accidentally to send a question to one person. Um, the only other thing I'll say before we start is if you are tweeting, we're using the hashtag bookseller webinar. Hashtag bookseller webinar. Bookseller will be live tweeting the event as well, so there should be some, uh, some chat about this on, uh, on Twitter as we go along. I'm going to introduce our panel very briefly, um, and then we're going to be talking about our subject, prizes and translation, and what this means. It's a fairly broad subject because I think we're going to cover prizes for translation, prizes of other things that might have impact on translation, how translation prizes and prizes related to translation might have an impact on uh, publishing, on the work of translators, on retail, on all sorts of things. So it's a fairly broad uh, and very interesting conversation we're going to have. So, brief introductions just before we get started. Um, Kassan Fagiani is the Managing Director at Duff Publishers. Um, it's a London-based independent publisher. He's been working um, in publishing and also in book uh, retail, uh, owner and manager of bookshops, including one of my favorites in the whole world. Um, Duff received the uh, received the Sheikh Zayed translation grant for a translation of Hatless, um, won the Sheikh Zayed Children's Literature Award a couple of years ago, which they published in a translation by Nancy Roberts. Talking about Nancy Roberts, who's very conveniently here in a very nice kind of, you know, segue. Uh, Nancy, uh, who in addition to translating that Sheikh Zayed Award winning title Hatless, um, she's a freelance translator from Arabic of modern Arabic literature, current affairs, Christian Muslim relations and Islamic thought and history. She was the winner of the 2018 Sheikh Ahmad Prize for Translation and International Understanding, as well as being commended for the Saif Khobash Banapal Prize for Translation from Arabic in uh, about 10-12 years ago, 2008. And Samantha Schnee is uh, the founding editor of Words Without Borders. She is a translator from Spanish. Um, she's currently secretary of ALTA, the American Literary Translators Association. She's chaired a number of uh, translation grant juries, including the Penn Heim uh, grants. She's on the board of English Penn, where also she chairs the Writing Translation Committee. One of her uh, translations, Texas, was shortlisted for the Pan America Translation Prize, won the Typographical Era Translation Award, um, and she has a new book by Carmen Buyosa, author of that same uh, author of Texas, called The Book of Anna, which is coming out, Sam, when? Soon, yes? It, it's out now. It, it oh. came out in April. In oh, New York. April. No British publisher yet, however. Well, as I, as I often find myself doing, I would like to apologize for British publishing. I find, I find like three quarters of my time is basically doing that. Um, so it's lovely to have you here. We have very different experiences of working with translation and indeed with, with prizes and prize winning. Um, I'm gonna start by asking the, the, the translators, Nancy and Sam, if you can say something about um, your own experiences um, based on the things that you have won or been commended for or shortlisted for. Um, and Nancy, maybe I can start with you. If you can say something about what what it means for a translator to have their work recognized for a translation prize. I'm mean, thinking about the one you won. I'm thinking about the the the, right. the, the commendation for the for the the for Right. Well, the first uh, prize I ever won was in 1984. It was the um, let me just try to was the University of Arkansas Translation Prize. And I got that, it was for an unpublished uh, manuscript, which is I've never really seen much elsewhere. It was for my translation of Radisson Man's Beirut 75. And um, 
it was amazing. I was an amazing experience because I was a, a rookie. I, it was the first thing I'd ever translated. I just happened to see the ad. You know, I was working in a, in a fast food restaurant and translating, you know, as a hobby. And um, part of the prize was to get the a book published. So that was totally amazing and exciting and a big boost to my morale, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, the commendation that I got um, at SAFE for the SAFE Robash uh, in 2008, of course, that, that made me feel great. Apparently, um, Marilyn Booth, she was personally, she kind of pushed them to do that. Uh, it was a very difficult historical novel um, called The Man from Beshmur. It deals with the uh, eighth and ninth century Egypt um, and the relations between Muslims and Copts at that time. And um, I, I appreciated her effort, you know, um, because it was um, a lot of research went into it. Um, and then as far as the most recent one, um, that was also overwhelming, uh, amazing, uh, you know, to be invited to Qatar and, and be able to, you know, speak to people and meet people that I've been able to work with since that time. For me personally, it opened up contacts with people that I've had valuable experience with since. Um, needless to say, it was um, a boost to my morale. And, um, but interestingly, even though it's a huge prize, I mean, the, the amount of money is embarrassingly, you know, large. Um, nobody, nobody seemed to know about it. I, I got congratulations from maybe two people and virtually no one else, even people that I worked with, never even mentioned it as if it hadn't happened, which was okay with me. I mean, that's okay. But it was kind of interesting that a prize that you would consider to be rather uh, big and prestigious got hardly any, any, any mention anywhere. So that's in a nutshell, um, I guess some of my part of my experience with those prizes. Thank you. I, I'm interested and kind of reassured that, that the idea of getting a kind of validation is still is still valuable even after you've stopped being a rookie, even after you've been in this in this game for a little while, that it doesn't stop being worth it. But it's interesting what you say about about the kind of awareness of the prizes, and I think we should probably come back to this later, um, because it, if one of it, if one of the functions of a prize is to draw attention to the thing it is rewarding, not just to give money but to draw attention to it, I am constantly struck by how many big prizes no one is aware of, and therefore you wonder what on earth the point is. Um, mm -hmm if a prize essentially has a publicity function that is not doing terribly useful publicity. But we can, we can come back to that. Sam, what about you? I mentioned the book you did with Carmen. I mentioned Texas, which, which won Topographical Era and was, was um, shortlisted for the pen. Um, did it make a difference to you? Did it make a difference to the fortunes of the book that it was recognized in those ways? I don't think that the Typographical Era one did. That's an audience voted award. And I think it just depends on how much publicity the publishers do to try to get people to vote in the run up to the deadline. Um, although I did get a lovely little necklace with a miniature typewriter on it, which is nice to put on my shelf. Um, I don't think it had any impact on, on the book. I don't think it had any impact on me. I think that the, the Pen America Translation Prize being a much more well-known prize probably did um, help me as a translator in that um, because it was my first book length transla translation, I think it probably legitimized me as a translator um, in, in some editor's eyes. And um, for the book, I think it, it probably did help with book sales. But I wanted to um, share a quote from, I texted my friend Elizabeth Jaquette about this because she had received one of the, um, I think one of her first translations, um, pen grant, a pen translates grant from English pen. Um, and she said, I can honestly say, I'm not sure I would have the translation career I do today were it not for the first English pen translates grant. She translated The Q by Basma El Aziz. The Q certainly would never have been published. Only one publisher was interested, Melville House. 
and they said they would only acquire it if the translation were fully funded. For a project from Arabic, there are no other full funding options. Of course, the queue went on to be well-reviewed, long-listed for the Best Translated Book Award, and shortlisted for the TA First Translation Award, which really helped launch me as a translator. And Basma was named a foreign policy global thinker as a result. None of that would have happened without the English Pen Award. The terms of the grant also were the only reason I was paid the TA rate for the project. Otherwise, the publisher was offering less than two thirds that rate. So I think that's a, a, another kind of valuable case study, sort of like yours, Nancy, of, of how a prize, particularly early in a career, can make a huge difference to whether or not a translator decides to stay the course um, and can make a huge difference to an author as well. Thank you. Um, just before I move on to Gassan, Sam, the other thing which is interesting to me is, I, I mentioned in the introduction your involvement, uh, your involvement forever, I guess, with Words Without Borders. Um, and Words Without Borders has in, kind of institutionally won award as well, has been recognized as a company, as a publication. I wonder if that makes a, a difference for, not for individuals, but for the company in terms of being able to get profile and in terms of being able to raise money, the words of their borders can now be an, announced as a winner of the X award or the Y award. I think it does help a lot. Um, the first big award we won was one of the London Book Fair mm -hmm. International Excellence Awards. Um, and I think it's an imprimatur of, of recognition that you can show funders to say, look, the world work we're doing is being recognized on a global stage um, and valued. And then we won another award from the Whiting Foundation, which was pretty significant because it also came with funding. And you know, the funding part is something that I'm sure that you'll lead us to talk about later as well, but the funding can make an enormous difference. Uh, you know, if you have a, a small purse, that's great. But if you have a large purse, like say the grant that you were referring to, Nancy, for the safe, um, was it the yeah. Paul, Bonnie Paul Prize? The Hamad is the one, yeah, that's really significant. Uh, <clears throat> or the Sheikh Zayed Awards, or I mean, I think of them a little bit like the MacArthur Genius Grants because it's such a large purse that it can really free up um, a translator or a publisher and, you know, speaking as a publisher um, who won a, an award that had a large purse um, to do work that you otherwise wouldn't have the capacity to do. Mm -hmm. right. And that could be publishing yeah. things that you might not otherwise have the bandwidth to invest in. Thank you. Yes, um, before uh, we'll, we'll talk a little later about about the the grant you got the Sheikh Zayed grant you got to support the the translation you published of Nancy's work, um, but I wondered whether other prizes have an impact on you, either as a publisher or I suppose in, in book retail, in terms of making you more likely to want to publish something if it's received an award in the home country, making it easier to sell something, actually you know on the on the shop floor. How much do do prizes? not things that you have won, but things that are kind of happening out there, how much do they have an impact on what you might choose to publish and how you can sell them? I, I, I think they have big impact to, to choose something that has won a prize, you know? I us, but I usually think when something wins a prize, probably go to a bigger publisher. They wouldn't go to a publisher like me. But definitely, if I get, if I get a book that has won a, a big prize, I think it's just even just the motivation is enough there, you know, to say, okay, I have a better chance with this one. I could advertise it better, mm. something like that, you know. Uh, I mean, in the retail section for us, the Booker Prize and even the shortlist and the Booker Prize or all the longer, they, we always make sure that we have them. We we'll put them in display because we know that they will sell because of the connection to the prize. The, the Booker is, a, is an interesting and, and kind of exceptional case, which we can talk about. But when you were to, talking about um, being inf influenced by books winning prizes in the home language and the home country, and maybe thinking this slightly improves your chances, have a better chance of being able to sell this, is this almost irrespective of which prize? I mean, does winning any prize help? Or are there really certain ones that you think well, the, the, the biggest value because people will know this one? 
I think the biggest prize is the IPAF, you know, the, the Booker Prize, Arabic Booker Prize. Yeah. But uh, from experience, it doesn't reflect much in the English language market, you know, because uh, translated books, especially from Arabic now, they have hard time making it in bookshops. There's a lot, of, I mean, like a small company like mine, we translated over nine Arabic books by ourselves. Uh, it, it was hard for me to get them in, in Waterstone or other independent shops, mm -hmm. but I know they sell if a bookshop, like because I'm lucky to have a bookshop where I can experiment and we list the books there, we sell 50 to 100 copy from each title. Just, I, I wasn't able to, to, to get to the other bookshops or the big one, the, the chain, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get in a chain, then I think there's, you have a big chance of the book making more sales, you know. Yeah. Uh, yes, this is a common, a common problem that everyone will recognize. Um, and I, it's funny that you say, you know, it's, it's a difficult time for, especially from Arabic. And of course, I'm thinking it's a difficult time, especially from Portuguese and Sam was thinking, especially from Spanish. And actually, everyone is, everyone is individually in the worst possible situation. So yeah. at, at the risk of, of, of trying to compete. Um, I, I want to come back to something. So Ghassan said something just now, um, Sam and Nancy, about... Uh, you know, a prize like the, the IPAF uh, in such a way for fiction uh, is useful, but even that isn't very well known in the English speaking world. And I think we, one of the issues we have, and this comes back to something Nancy said about the, the, the prize that she won, um, not actually having a kind of visibility in many places. I wonder whether just the two of you as translators are aware of what is winning prizes in the country that you, you, or the, the languages you translate from. Sam, do you have a sense of, you know, who the big prize winners are in, in Spain and Mexico and Argentina? I, I do try to keep track of that because I think it's easier to interest a publisher in a translation project if there's a prize behind it. So I'm thinking now of the Clarine Prize, which Agustina Bazterica's Tender is the Flesh won a few years back. Um, and, you know, again, it's a question of imprimatur that it's been recognized to be at a high level in its homeland, um, makes it easier to export. The Aralde Prize is another one um, in the Hispanic world of letters. And I suppose mostly, um, you know, those would be known only to translators or to publishers who are working with translated literature, you know, same, you could maybe say the same for the Prix Goncourt from France or the Anna Sayers from Germany, um, that they're just not known in the, the reading public in a way that makes a significant difference to a book's sales. But it, I think it does make a difference to the people who are making the choices about what to translate and what not to translate. So I, I do keep an eye on that. Even, you think it makes a difference even among the prizes? I mean, the interesting thing is if you look at a country like Spain, which has a lot of literary prizes, yeah. um, to, to, to you or I, to you or me, as people who, who sort of follow this, we have a sense of which prizes are kind of quite loud, but also sort of meaningless. Um, because we know how they're selected, we know how they're judged, we know who is eligible and who isn't eligible. Um, and it is odd seeing, seeing these things being held up as being of value by people who have no way of differentiating between the Aralde Prize being more or less prestigious than this other one. Um, and the moment, it, the moment it gets transplanted to some other world, the people say, ah, oh, the winner of the X Prize. And we're thinking, but the X Prize is a, it's it's ludicrous. I mean, it's it's some it's some guy with a lot of money giving it to his cousin, and it's always his cousin who wins it every year. Um, there is this issue of, of of how the how the prestige is kind of conveyed from one from from uh, the, the culture that knows to the culture that largely doesn't. It's true, and I think it works to an extent. You know, I, I think that there are people who think, and I you know, I'm not going to name any prizes for the cousin. But, you know, you can think of prizes. Um, an author I work with won a, a prize called the Café Gijón Prize, which is given by, uh, it's a, a blind jury um, 
but blind reading so that they don't know who they're choosing. So it is legitimate, but it's just not very well known. And I've been trying to get that book into an English language publisher now for five years. And it's just, you know, not being picked up. Um, although I'm not giving up either. And I'm confident one day I will eventually <laughs> find uh, someone who will publish it because it's a unique work of literature. But, um, you know, probably what would have more of an impact than that particular Cafe Gijon Prize is funding to support the translation cost because that is an important uh, factor when a publisher is trying to make a decision on whether or not to buy. Thank you. I'll come, I'll come to that question of funding and I'll ask Gasson about that in a moment. But Nancy, your, your experience of, of a kind of, I guess, kind of being aware or not of the books that are being recognized, the prizes that are, that are available for work in Arabic, quite apart from the stuff that's being translated, do you have a sense of the kind of landscape of what is being, what is rising to the top like that? A little bit. I don't follow it closely, but I do know that, for example, um, Ibrahim Nasrola, the the, the author for whom I translated the works that uh, earned me the, the Hamad, Sheikh Hamad Prize, he recently got the Arabic Booker for um, a book of his, which, um, so I'm, I'm happy for him about that. And it's good to know because he, he has deserved a prize for many, for many years of his own. I know that Huda Barakat has, has received um, a number of prizes in the Arab world. And um, an author that I translated for a few years ago and recently, I just have a translation for her coming out. Well, it's, it came out in, in April is uh, Nejwa Bin Shiklan. She's a Libyan author. And I can't tell you exactly what prizes she has won, but she has won a number in her own country or in the Arab world. Um, and um, then recently there's a author named, um, his name is Hadji Jabr. And uh, he, he wrote a book called Raghwa Sauda. And it recently won Actually, I can't remember the name of the prize he won. I think it may be the Arabic, it's not the Arabic Booker, but they, they have a number of Arabic prizes going around these days. And I was invited to translate it. And I'm almost certain that it's the reason that there was, it's because he now has funding, because he's going to fund it personally. And so the prize is allowing him to fund it himself. Right. And that doesn't always work, but it worked with, with Nejwa bin Chitlan's book, was funded privately by a person that supported her work and thought it was wonderful. And it took us more than a year, about a year and a half to find a publisher, but we finally did. Um, so that's, I mean, that's, those are examples of, well, different things. Uh, in the case of uh, um, Hadi Jabir, his, his having won a prize is making it possible for him, for him to fund a translation of his own instead of waiting for somebody to pick it up. And hopefully, of course, we'll um, be successful in finding a, a publisher. That's Sometimes I find myself being both the translator and the literary agent um, because I, uh, for an entire year, there was a, there was a, a literary agent trying to find uh, a publisher for Nezwa Bin Chetland's book. It's called, um, the slave yards, and uh, we were unsuccessful. And uh, she finally said, "You know, I've given up on the literary agent help." You know, and so I said, "Okay, okay, let me let me give give it a try." And I went to a publisher that had actually published for me translations earlier, and they loved it, and that was very exciting um, because I it's very worthy. Like like uh, Sam with the books that she's talking about, there's there, there are books that you just say this is so good, somebody's gotta want it someday. And, um, Thank you, Gasan. Both, both Sam and Nancy have referred to the the question of how these things get funded, um, mm -hmm. and I want to ask you about that um, as a with your your publisher hat on specifically. Nancy talked about an author winning a prize and therefore having the resources to fund the translation themselves. Sam referred to translation grants essentially being available. And one of the issues that we have with a lot of publishers, especially with certain kinds of books like picture books, children's books, um, is that even where there are grants, the question of what they do and don't pay for uh, is 
relevant that having a ground the paste translation cost is fine, but actually if you're producing a four color picture book, the costs are substantially somewhere else. So I wonder if you can say us on something about having got the, the, the Shakespeare grant, um, how important it is for you as a publisher to be able to draw on some kind of funding to support what is otherwise, I, I imagine, a prohibitive... Uh, uh, yeah, um, well, when I started with the publishing project for, for that, where we do translations of Arabic literature, and I'll, I'll hold my hand up, I say I was very naive, and I funded everything that we did, translation cost, uh, publishing cost, production, everything. But after a while, it became very hard because the the bottom line wasn't there, you know. And then I started to I thought about the funding, and unfortunately, I couldn't find any funding for Arabic books. There wasn't; it's not available. When I go to the London Book Fair, you go to the Turks or German or Italian; they provide you. We give you funding for the translation. Or we give you funding for promotion. That was available. But in Arabic, um, we're very lucky with the Sheikh Zayed because it, you know, they offered the funding and I said, we'll do it because we want to add, because we feel like translating Arabic fiction is important for furthering understanding between people. Uh, what before that, decided to open our, our uh, area of translation from just Arabic to go to other language. And once we did that, we got, funding from Japanese, almost full funding for the book. We got funding from German, Swiss, and from Italian. So then it's like a light bulb there. Why, why we haven't done this before, you know? Mm -hmm. And then after that came the Sheikh Zayed, which we are really happy with because that was our focus to support Arabic writers and Arabic illustrators, either in children's books or adult books. And what you're, what you're describing also has an impact on, I mean, this is on very crudely on what gets published. It's very clear to see, if you look at the kind of the output of the publishing world, those languages being translated disproportionately, it's still never very much, but disproportionately the ones that have very, very often have very robust, very flexible, quite imaginative, quite strategic pots of funding behind them. Uh, and very often the languages that are translated much less are the ones where it is simply impossible to get either to get money or to get uh, the right kind of money. So money that will pay for the right things, money that is sufficiently yeah. flexible to allow you to pay for the, 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 the right sort of things. I wonder if one of the issues then with both with grant funding, but also with, with sort of book prizes, you know, prize for an individual book, um, is the effect that it can have then on, on the publishing industry and on the sector. So it's not just about rewarding this one book and that's very nice and someone gets a little check and a book gets a sticker and maybe sells very well. But the extent to which the, 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 a, a new prize or an existing prize can somehow, because of the attention it brings or because of the money it invests, might actually help to change um, the, the imbalances in what is being published, might conversely propagate the analysis and what's being published. Um, I wonder whether any of you have a sense of that, of, of the ways in which, whether it's a, you know, a, a big and noisy and impressive prize like the Booker International, um, isn't just a great thing for one book or six books or 13 books, but might, uh, or uh, book awards as of recently in the US, many other examples, um, might sort of change the landscape somehow. I mean, the, the US is interesting with it, with it, the new, translation, newish translation category, National Book Awards. Do you have that sense, Sam, that as you are nodding, so I'm gonna pick on you now, that, that one, one of the, the aims or all collateral benefits of the prize is that it might actually shift attitudes among consumers, among publishers, among people who are risk takers or not risk takers. Uh, it's an interesting question. Oh, go ahead, Nancy. I didn't know if he was, uh, no, you go ahead because I didn't know who he was talking to. You go ahead, Sam. Um, I think of Elena Ferrante, for example, um, which was not marketed particularly as a translation. And, you know, I think that's part of Europa's um, MO is that they don't tend to put translators names on books and, and 
make that um, part of their stick as, as a publisher, but obviously it was a roaring success and continues to be. Um, and, you know, I think the way that that has affected the translator and Goldstein, um, you know, I mean, that's sort of life changing in a way when you have that kind of hit with an author. But um, I'm not really answering your question. I think it does. Um, for me, the, the background of this is that historically, translation was perhaps a conventional wisdom among mainstream publishers was translation is tricky or difficult and, and the book buyers actually don't want translation because it's scary and, and hard and, and you know, I just want to read a nice book by the fireplace and relax. Um, and I do think that has changed dramatically over the last decade. If you look at the figures in the translation database that Chad Post has kept for the last decade, over steadily, um, you know, with maybe one blip in the last 10 years, the number of translations being published has increased. And I think that there is more acceptance now, and perhaps this is a knock-on effect of globalization, that people are, are number one, more accepting, but also number two, more curious about reading beyond, um, you know, what, they, what they're familiar with. Um, so I do think that um, there has been a pretty big change in the, in the last decade. And you, know, you could probably talk to this too, Danny, because you've got your finger on the pulse in the UK. Um, that was part of your question. What was the other part of the question? Well, I suppose I wonder to what extent a prize, uh, book prizes and that sort of recognition ha has helped to drive that change or could help to drive that change. Because, I, because th there was this question of the extent to which prizes are, are not just about rewarding a, a, a book, but are a kind of, a, sort of raising all ships, you know, yeah. rising, lift, lifting all ships sort of thing. Um, and so, so the, the fact that um, National Book Awards have a translation category isn't, doesn't just mean one lucky translator gets to win every year. It might actually be either a symptom of or a driver of, to some extent, this growing awareness of international writing generally, not just this one particular this one particular book. Yeah, I don't think that that translation prize would have been, it was instituted by Lisa Lucas, who's now leaving um, the National Book Foundation, unfortunately, but I, I don't think that that would have been doable um, 10 years ago. Hmm. Translation just wasn't on the radar of the, the kind of every man reader the way it, it is today. And, and that's not to say that it's, on par with um, domestic you know, production, but I, I do think it's come a long way. And I do think a prize like that can have an effect of um, normalizing, um, you know, this, so it's, if there are people out there who still think, ooh, translation, complicated, difficult, don't wanna pick that up, um, which I'm not sure there are, but but if there are, perhaps um, that does actually make a difference that it's gone more mainstream. And eventually we could get to a point where we don't have to have translation prizes for translation anymore because it all goes so mainstream that it's all kind of equal, but I don't think we're there yet and we won't be for a while. Though, we, though interestingly, there are some prizes. So today, some of you will have seen the Dublin Prize, the International Dublin Literary Award, announced their shortlist. And the Dublin Prize mixes up, it's anything in English, whether it's written in English or translated into English. And this year, as is often the case, the shortlist had three translations, um, Antonio Lloyd-Jones and Tina Cover and Lauren Stein translations alongside seven books written in English. And I wonder what all, all of you feel, the translators and, and publisher feel about the extent to which we do want prizes to differentiate um, between translations and non-translations, whether as a translator actually to win a prize for which the English language writers are also eligible might be worth, kind of prestige-wise, worth more. Nancy, how do you, how do you feel? Yeah, I personally think that there should be a distinction because to write a novel is one thing and to translate a novel is another entirely. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I think that if a translation is also honored, then the author should be equally honored. Because if it were not for that original work, the translation would never have come into existence. And I personally could never write a novel. I could no. never in my life write a novel. No, that's, uh, that's a, it's, a, it's a completely monstrous proposition and I couldn't either. But mm. I'm thinking about those prizes and there, there are a few in the UK where where translations are eligible for, as it were, the normal prizes for the kind of mainstream prizes. Yeah. Um, and it's not that the translator wins instead, it's that you have either an English language writer or you have a, say, Arabic language writer and their translator who are okay. kind of joint winners of this thing. Okay. Um, case, and yeah. actually thinking, Ghassan, even in terms, of, in terms of the children's book world, um, since you're publishing children's books at Duff, we used in the UK to have a great prize for children's books and translation, the, the Marsh Award. The Marsh Award no longer exists, but around the same time the Marsh Award stopped existing, the Carnegie Medal, which is the most important, most prestigious, most desirable children's book prize in the UK, started allowing translations. And so we had this kind of choice of saying, well, either we have this thing which is only for a very small number of translations competing against each other, or we go, well, actually, the translations are now going to be, you know, at the adults table. And it's more competitive because we're you know, competing with the entire English speaking world as well. But at the same time, the, we're in the, in the kind of much bigger, much higher prestige prize because the Carnegie Medal gets a huge amount of attention. The translation was shortlisted this year for the first time for the Carnegie Medal, which got much more attention than they would have done as the winner of the Marsh, which is, was lovely and was special. Small. Specialist means it was small. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think uh, translated work should be also included because uh, like you said, it would be just uh, an author and a translator. And a translated book is a different book in the end. You know, it's not the same book because, uh, and there is an art in translation. Not everybody, like not everybody can write, but not everybody can translate and translate skillfully. So I think there could be a prize for translation and could be a prize for a book on its own merits. I think that's, especially with children's books, because illustrated children's books, there's the writer, the translator and the illustrator. So they, they should be included. They should compete on a level ground field, mm -hmm. even though they come from different process. Uh, and I mean, presumably, sorry to interrupt, Gassan, but presumably as a bookseller, you do sell them all in the same way. You don't sell a translated Translate, picture book yeah. differently to the way you sell a Julian Axel picture book. Yeah, we put them all together and we recommend, because there's, I think, even, even with children's books, Parents do the pieing a lot of times, but a lot of parents are specific. Like the, there's there's books about inclusivity, uh, there's books uh, that teach different culture, and and different ways of looking at uh, literature. You know, children's literature. So mm -hmm. we we don't we don't have a section for translated children's books. You know, it's all books, and even even the all of the adult books we don't have them in different sections as translated or English written, you know? Um, yeah, I, and I think that's how it should be, you know? Mm. Uh, it just, I think bookshops have a dilemma as well, especially a small independent bookshops. All the shelves compete for a place. All, all the books compete for a place in the shelves. And we go through that as well. But we, we, we make a decision to include a lot of different literature from around different around the world, and they sell, as I said, put them in the shelf, and they will compete. You know. Thank you. Um, in a few minutes, I'm going to go on to questions from the, the people who are watching. So, can I just remind you, if you have questions for us, um, there's already something. In fact, someone has already put a question. We'll come to in a moment in the Q and A function if you could use that. So we have some questions. Um, but I have a few more things I want to talk about before we do that. Um, and one of them is about it kind of goes back to something we were talking about at the beginning about which, which are the prizes that um, are, we, we value or which are the prizes that have value. And I wonder to the translators, to Nancy and Sam, um, 
the the polite way of saying this is which of the prizes you think have value the the less polite way is which one would you want to win most of all that is really secretly my question but i'm curious to know not just which one you would want to win because of course you want to win all of them but 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 why what is it about certain you know prize a rather than prize b that makes you think actually this is something which may be because there is more money or it may be because it's recognition of my peers or it may be because the judging process i know is very rigorous what are the things nancy what what is it makes that, that makes a prize you know if you have that we do have this huge array of different prizes for different even within the translation world there are huge numbers of prizes um what what makes one more more covetable than another well, for me, of course, one thing would be knowing that it had nothing to do with anything but the quality of the writing. Um, I mean, we want, it to, we want it to be objective, we want it to be blind. And, and I don't know if that happens, especially if, um, if it's already been published. Well, they're going to know the, the name of the translator, most likely. Yeah. And um, that could possibly um, bias results. Um, but I think for me, basically, it would just but my criterion would be do they is it a fair playing field and as you were mentioning in the in the um the chapter that you sent around before we had this webinar you know there are often many factors even in who gets nominated and um uh you know there are many so many worthy works out there that mm -hmm. we don't even perhaps we'll never know about and then the incredible pressure on the judges. I cannot imagine being a judge and being required to read all of these um, entries. And then I'm, I'm supposed to you know, use X, Y, and Z as my criteria and, and weigh them all in a fair and just manner. Um, I guess I'm not answering your question, but I think that if I were going to choose a prize that I wanted to win, and I don't really know what that would be, I would just want to know that it was that I really deserved the prize if I got it, you know, basically. That's a that's a, a much better answer than my question, in fact. Sam, what about you? What what is the thing that makes a prize uh, d desirable? So there there are two things. I have a two part answer, and one goes back to your previous question about the Dublin Award. And I think it's really important to mention here that it's critical how the guidelines for a prize are drafted. So Antonia Lloyd-Jones, who's one of the nominated authors for her, translators for her work on Drive, the Plow, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, the Olga Tokarczuk title. Um, she wrote to the award organizers several years back and said, it's really important that you don't require a book to have been published in the original language in the last five years, because it will often take longer than that, 10 years. And in fact, they did change the regulations. So if they had not, um, Olga Tokarczuk's book would not have been eligible this year, it wouldn't have been eligible for the prize. And I think that's an important distinction to recognize that there's often quite a lag between the time a book is published in its homeland and the time the book is translated and published abroad, particularly in English. Um, you know, it's, Hassan knows better than anyone here. It's like having a, a baby elephant to, to make a book. It takes years. Um, and so it, it's an investment of time. So that's just to say that I think it's important to think through the guidelines of uh, how a prize is structured really thoroughly um, and to be open to possibly changing them um, with the times. To answer your question, I think there are two, as a speaking as a translator, there are two different kinds of prize. You can have the prize with the money or the prize with the recognition. Um, and they do two different things for your career because if you get the prize with the money, then you can go on and do things that you might not otherwise have had a chance to take a risk on, things that you think are wonderful but might not have as much commercial appeal and might never sell. Um, if you take the, the prestige prize, I, I don't know. I mean, it, be, it would be better to ask someone like Frank Wynn or Margaret Jill Costa, um, you know, how much they think that that has impacted on their careers because that hasn't really happened to me yet. 
if I had to choose a prize, I would actually choose for one of my authors to win the Nobel. Why? Because then that's sort of, um, it's like an insurance policy for your career as a translator, because you know that publishers are going to be chasing backlist titles for the next several years at least. And you know, you could, you've then lined up a whole bunch of work for yourself, um, presuming that you have a good relationship with the author and that the author will want you to continue to work on their, their oeuvre. So um, that's what I choose. And, and many of the authors I've worked with would be worthy. I'm not, can't say who. Yeah, but you don't, any, any of them, any would be fine. You don't mind which of your authors wins the Nobel. You're very <laughs> humble about your, your, your wish. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just ask you something related to something you said some a moment ago when you talk about the, the kind of drafting of the, the, the rules of the criteria for a, for a prize. Um, I was thinking when we were talking earlier about the prizes that, you know, a new prize that might recognize something that, that we want to draw attention to, that we want to change perception. Um, words without borders, I didn't mention for, for many years has given this thing called the Ottawa Award, which is a kind of contribution, a lifetime contribution to the translation. Um, I'm not sure what the, the wording is exactly, um, but it was started uh, six, seven years ago, eight years ago, something like that. I wonder if you can say something about what it was at that moment that made you, the Words Without Borders board, the staff, whoever it was, the funder as well, um, decide that this is the thing that we're going to support, this is a prize is the way to do it. I ask that partly because I, as you know, I started a new prize a few years ago and I did that despite the fact that I feel very strongly we have far too many literary prizes. Um, at the same time, I contributed to this you know, chaos of more and more prizes for smaller and, you know, narrower and narrower fields. But can you just say briefly something about, about that moment of deciding that we need another one, we need a, this kind of recognition, it's, a, it's not a, a book prize, it's a kind of contribution prize, um, but how you then go about making a decision about how you're going to frame that exactly. So that prize um, was in part in recognition of this trend that we were seeing. There's more translation, literature and translation coming out in the US. And how do we promote that trend so it doesn't fizzle out? What can we do? There are really very few um, prizes for editors who have the courage to take on projects that um, are translations are more expensive because you have to pay for the translation cost and um, you know often not commercially viable at least they don't seem so at the outset mm -hmm. so the majority of the winners of the Ottaway prize have been editors who have a, a life a life of dedication to translating authors um, and, and getting them onto American bookshelves and, and it's not that different, I think, from what you were thinking when you started your prize. You're, you're trying to recognize excellence in a part of the sector, in the part of the publishing chain that is very little celebrated. Um, you know, the author is typically the one who is celebrated as they should be, but um, at least, you know, when we're talking about publishing translation, editors serve as gatekeepers, and it was a way to reward um, gatekeepers who were taking chances on authors from abroad. Thank and you. encourage them. Yes, I'm sure it's having exactly that effect. Um, I have more things to ask, but we've had a few questions in the chat and in the, in the Q&A function. I'm gonna ask a couple of those uh, now. Um, and maybe there's one, I think, Yasan, this might be best for you to answer, which is about uh, small presses and prices and the, the imbalance against small presses, because there are some prices that have entry fees that, ha that require marketing budgets co covered and so forth. Um, there are, um, this is an anonymous questioner, um, but they say there are a lot of great prizes for indies springing up all the time, but it's still a minefield for small presses. Do you get that sense, Gassan, as a publisher, that, that there are certain ways in which prizes, particularly some of the big prizes, um, make it harder for a publisher that doesn't have unlimited, seemingly unlimited funds and marketing budgets and entry fees and so forth. Do you, do you feel that difference? Definitely, definitely, yes. Uh, it is scary even to get nominated. You know, you'll be happy about it if to, to, to apply, but, and then, like, yeah, it's, it's um, you have to, 
you have to have the cash to support this, you know, as a publisher. And at the end of the day, we would like to do that. But if I don't have the money, I cannot do it, you know. Yeah. It, simple as that, you know. So sometimes <laughs> we, we try to submit to some small prizes. And, and, and also you think, I'm so small. If I, if I apply for this big prize and spend all the money, and definitely I'm not going to win sometimes. It's just you have to think about winning and not winning the prize, you know. You would like to do that for your author or your translator. It would mm. be really great, you know, because it all comes together for you as as a publisher, as a book, as all, all these people. So it, become, it, it becomes like damn if you do and damn if you don't, you know. It's something we talk about a lot. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say if the entry fee were waived, um, I'm thinking about the Pen Translates grants that um, I think they considered the turnover of the publisher. And if it's below a certain threshold, then they fund the full translation. But above, you know, a, a large publisher would only have 75% of the translation funded. So if there were a sort of concession rate or, or a, a waiver, um, for smaller publishers under a turnover of 500,000 or, you know, whatever you pick the number, um, mm -hmm. would that would that affect your decision process, Kassan? For, for, for what, for applying for funding? For no, or applying for a prize. The applying for a prize, applying for funding, we don't mind, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, we have to do that. <laughs> it's, it's the prize, it's the, the prize, you know, you have to send them books, you have to send the original language books, you have, and, 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 and there's sometimes other costs associated with it. I mean, there's, it has to be a, to a certain number, like pound sign number, that I cannot go beyond. Yeah. So it, it does become prohibitive sometimes, you know. It's something, then, it, sorry to interrupt, it's something which a lot of prizes are talking about, whether, especially with there's a there's a children's book prize I'm involved with, which has which is judged by teachers and quite large numbers of teachers, and it means that you will have to send two dozen copies of a book that is long listed, and two dozen copies is not a huge investment if you are if you have a print run of five thousand copies, um, yeah. but it actually is quite a big deal. Two dozen copies plus postage plus, and it's all a very low risk, and if it's a picture book, you can't submit electronically, which more prizes are, are allowing electronic submissions now, which reduces cost, but it's still it still kind of narrows the access, doesn't it? Yeah, but tell you the truth, I wouldn't mind having that problem if, if that occurs, you know, so if somebody says, we encourage you to, to submit and there's good chance or whatever. Yeah, it wouldn't be a problem, but like if my print runs are 2000 anyway, so hmm. I can't do much than that, you know, <laughs> send them the whole print run. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult, it's difficult. There, there is a question, um, Emma just shared a question from Harriet French, uh, which is about uh, what advice would you give to translators at the start of their career about entering literary prizes? I was interested that Nancy at the very beginning was talking about a prize for an unpublished, um, an unpublished translation. So it's not just, you know, wh when you've published your first or second book. But I wonder if you know, especially Nancy or Sam, about other opportunities that translators, things that translators can enter. Um, I'm thinking about asymptote plus approximations. I'm thinking about uh, the John Dryden prize, Stephen Spender, if it's poetry. What are the prizes that, if you are not a published translator, but you kind of want to get into it, where are the places you can send your work? I think that Sam probably knows more than I do about this. I know that the University of Arkansas um, prize was specifically for unpublished. They, they specified unpublished, which I think is really lovely um, because it, it opens the door for people who haven't published yet. And then um, you had mentioned uh, in what you wrote, um, Daniel, you, you mentioned a prize specifically for your first translation, or did you not, or a first published yeah. uh, translation. First published translation. Yeah, and that, that prize would be a wonderful place to start, I think, for people. And uh, Sam being in the publishing field, she probably knows more than I do. I can think of two. Um, there aren't a lot, actually, because the majority of prizes the publisher submits on behalf of the translator. Um, the first is the Cliff Becker Prize, which is one of, it's run by the American Literary Translators Association, and it's for an unpublished manuscript as well. 
Um, mm -hmm. And that one, I believe, comes with a book contract with White Pine Press. So this year's winner is um, Lawrence Schimmel. Um, and it's a collection of poetry by Carmen Buyosa, one of the authors I've worked with. Um, and then the other thing which you can do um, from anywhere in the world, it's an American grant program open to translators is the Penn America Heim grants, which um, they're different slightly from the English Penn Translates grants, which only publishers can apply for. But the Heim grants, the translator submits independently and you don't have to have a contract in order to um, be able to receive one of those grants. And I think they do 10 a year now. And they're not huge. It's, you know, 3000 or $4,000. But it can, you know, make a really big difference to whether or not a book is picked up by a publisher. Um, yeah, I think it also depends on where the the translator is in their career but particularly for early career translators to win one of those highly competitive grants um, can be a very big boost as well thank you before we finish i wanted to ask i suppose this is for, for nancy and gasan um given who is hosting our event today i wanted to ask something specifically about translating from arabic and those opportunities um we mentioned of course the sheikh zayed we've mentioned the ipaf we've mentioned uh, the banapal the safkobash banapal prize um but i wonder nancy and gasan whether you can say something about first of all other opportunities there are specifically for arabic books arabic work in translation and supporting those and and prizes and grants and so forth, but also whether either of you feel there are particular things that, that don't exist and should exist, the kind of, you know, magic wand, wouldn't it be great if we had a prize to do this or a grant to do that or an award or an a, a organization to do that? Do you have either, either of you, I don't, I'm not going to pick on one of you, but either of you, Nancy or Gassan, do you have a, either things that you're aware of that you think are great and we should mention or things that you wish we had? We wish there was more money, presumably. Yeah, we wish we had more money, more grants. That was predictable. Uh, uh, one thing I want to say about that, you know, with the Sheikh Zayed and maybe the IPAP, the, the impact is still, I think, you know, it depends on the cumulative experience of, of these, these prices, you know. I think it's like Sheikh Zayed probably getting stronger and stronger, getting more well known, which will probably more publishers will pick books from there. The only problem for me with, with Arabic publishing, you know, which can help books as well, is there is no sales records. You don't know how much a book sold, you know? It's a market of 400 million people, but there's 23 countries, and publishers don't tell us how much a book sold. Because, you know, English publishers especially, they want numbers. Okay, if you sold 100,000 copies, I'll take you. Then if, you. if you succeeded in your homeland, in your market, then you probably have better chance of succeeding somewhere else. And, and that's something that hasn't to do with the price, it has to do with the publishing industry in there. And I think, I hope that they, they can solve that problem. Sometimes you feel like publishers trying to hide in the selling numbers, from their authors, I don't know if that's true or not, but just feels like it, you know. I asked some of my my authors, how much did you sell? They say, I don't know. <laughs> they just give me money sometimes and that's it, you know. And I think that's a big problem to help books to be translated because, you know, it's, it's all at the bottom line at the end of the day. Big publishers, they don't act with their hearts, they act with their brains more than the smaller publishers. Just, I wanted to point that out, you know. That is uh, that might be disputed by any big publishers watching, but they're not going to have the chance, I'm afraid. Just Nancy, just quickly before we end, what what is your your sense of other other opportunities that exist specifically for Arabic or or that kind of? I think Asante was a really interesting idea that you know we just like data is is a thing that's missing that will be useful. What what do you think we we could use that we don't have? Well, first of all, I want to say affirm what uh, Bassan just said, because the uh, author that I translated for, Necho bin Shudwan, her slave yards, uh, we, she was being asked by a publisher in the United States, how many did, how many did you sell? 
And she said, the author, the, the publisher will not tell me. They won't give me that, that information, which seemed pretty um, shocking, actually. Um, for me personally, I, I have to confess that I am kind of insular. Um, and uh, so I'm not really out there um, watching the networks and, and, and monitoring the prizes and, and the opportunities. Basically, I think after I became well enough known to be approached by publishers, I would most of the time just, if a publisher uh, approached me, I would, I would go with them. And if, if it was enough for me to, um, if they were able to pay me something. And um, as far as prizes and uh, further opportunity for funding, I'm afraid I really don't, I don't feel that I'm well knowledgeable about this um, matter. And um, so uh, I was fortunate enough that my first, my first three translations, basically I translated them without any money. I did it solely out of the love of what, you know, my heart. And then I looked for trans uh, publishers and uh, one publisher paid me $300 for my translation. And, uh, <laughs> but that later opened doors to other publishers that became interested in me. So it, it involved a lot of sacrifice actually, I will say. Um, and in addition to publishing literature, I publish or rather uh, translating literature, I translate non-literature, um, UN reports and legal documents and so forth. And that's what keeps me going financially. Uh, it isn't by any means just the financial or maybe translation of literature. So I also would encourage people who are interested in translating literature um, to be sure that they have uh, a, they get a foothold in the translation industry just as a regular translator, you know, birth certificates, uh, articles, anything, anything that crossed my desk, I was willing to take. Right. And that is the case to this day. Um, so, and it also, uh, just on the subject, I think that translating a, a full, like a steady diet of nothing but translation or, or literature is, is deadly. Um, it takes so much creative energy that sometimes you're just happy to have a, you know, a, a, a contract yeah. or a legal document. It just it requires no creativity whatsoever. And so you can uh, kind of fund yourself by going back and forth between different kinds of translating. Thank you. We are, um, I'm afraid, out of time. We're a couple of minutes over. I apologize. That, that um, which is just as well, because that thing you said about $300, it, it saves me from having a very, very long rant about that. Um, this is just as well I'm going to have to stop talking now. Um, I'm very grateful, um, of course, to the Shakespeare Book uh, Award Translation Fund for supporting this event. I should say submissions for the 15th edition of the award are open now. They're open until uh, open till the 1st of October. Um, the Shakespeare Book Award Translation Fund itself is open for uh, applications year round for those of you who, who might be interested in applying to that. Um, I, uh, sorry, I'm just reading, we have more things coming in at the very, very last second. Um, oh, Marilyn Booth, who was mentioned earlier by Nancy, um, mm -hmm. is, has a question. Um, how can prizes contribute to translators' better situations? We don't have time to answer that completely, though I will just say, in response to Marilyn's question about whether prizes can contribute to translators' better situations, one of the things that Sam mentioned earlier was the English Pen Award, um, which one of the conditions of a publisher getting that, that grant funding is um, the, the, the money is contingent on the translator being paid a certain rate. And it's quite a nifty way of the, the funding actually not only being good for publishers, but also leveraging a better condition for translators. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to have to uh, not go into that any further, but I'm sure this conversation will go on. Um, so thank you to Shakespeare Book Award Translation Fund. Thank you to the bookseller for, for hosting us. Um, and thank you, of course, to Nancy and Gassan and Sam for this uh, very interesting conversation. Thank you all for watching. Thank you. Danny. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.